Welcome to TV 20 News, I'm Dan Monroe. April 8th, 2024 marks the first time Cleveland will experience a total solar eclipse in over 100 years. And the Great Lakes Science Center will be ready for the celestial event with a little help from NASA. Here's TV 20's Errol Porter with the story. We are here at the Great Lakes Science Center in downtown Cleveland. And of course, Cleveland is the number one place in the world to see the total eclipse. It all starts with a big celebration right here, right now. Ahead of the big celebration on April 8th, organizations like the NASA Glenn Research Center and Great Lakes Science Center are ensuring that residents and visitors of Cleveland experience this once in a lifetime opportunity to its fullest potential, while also remaining safe in the process. So we have eclipse glasses here that uh, we are providing at the Great Lakes Science Center. NASA is also providing them, and we have a few organizations that will be providing them at our festival. So this is to make sure that you can watch the eclipse safely, right? We are all about that. We want to make sure everyone is enjoying it and also staying safe. If eclipse glasses are not your thing, we also have hands-on activities that you can do with all ages. This is a pinhole camera, so it has all the instructions on it, and you can make it into like a little rectangle and you view the eclipse that way from the ground. Not safe to look at the sun without specialized eye protection designed for solar viewing. No pair of sunglasses you have are dark enough or enough to protect your eyes from looking directly at the sun. And so we're trying to get the word out so that people can prepare. Um, we One of the ways that you can uh, prepare is to come see us at public events. NASA is distributing free eclipse glasses at local events. Um, but we also, and we also have on our website at go.nasa.gov forward slash eclipse 2024. We have lots of resources there for people around the country to prepare to look for where NASA's have hosting events where we'll also have eclipse glasses. With the next total solar eclipse not happening until near the end of the century, Cleveland is in the unique position for a perfect viewing experience. For those who can attend, NASA will provide a live stream for interested viewers across the country. So we're going to have NASA Village set up and uh, NASA TV broadcasting live for the world to see following the path of the eclipse this year. We have um, a great landscape. It's gonna be right over the city skyline. So that's gonna be a great view. And we're gonna have a host of things for people to do throughout the day and the weekend leading up to the eclipse time. Well, there you have it. Cleveland is celebrating for an upcoming total eclipse and we're excited. But remember, they wanna stress and warn you, do not look directly at the sun on that particular day without any protection. And remember, if you hurt your eyes, you can't watch the City of Cleveland TV 20. I'm Errol Porter reporting. Back to you, Dan. Thanks, Errol. Members of Cleveland's Slovenian community and beyond came together for the 12th annual celebration of Curran Tavanie. Here's TV 20's Alex McTurna with the story. Named for the Kurent, a mythical Slavic creature that chases away the winter and brings in the spring, Kurento Vanje is a yearly celebration in Slovenia that now has its own history with the city of Cleveland. The event is centered around the Kurent, and the Kurent is a mythical Slavic creature, and he comes out for the spring and he has horns, he has fur, he has loud, large bells that he wears around his waist and he scares away winter so that spring can come through. So this is something that is native to Slovenia and uh, this is, we are part of the Slovenian American community and um, it's a tradition there and we brought it to Cleveland 12 years ago and we hope that the current chases away winter in Cleveland, the same that he does in Slovenia. The celebration is spread out over a week with the final day being the highlight. The day started with a 5K marathon with over 300 runners taking part before a parade. Afterwards, attendees broke off into the celebrations, including a delicious selection of traditional Slovenian food. We have creme schnitta, which is a delicious pastry with a custard and cream uh, filling. And then we have our krofa, which is similar to a pachki that uh, many Clevelanders will know about. It's a donut fried dough. Who wouldn't love that? Uh, lots of food trucks. We have schnitzel, Slovenian sausage, stuffed cabbage. Uh, chicken paprikash, I mean, there's something for everyone. And then for those who are the less adventurous, pizza and tacos and hot dogs. <laughs> With an estimated 15,000 attendants, this marks the largest Corento Vanier to date, with multiple stages performing traditional Slovenian music and a Cleveland favorite, polka. We're just really grateful for the support of the community, our sponsors, our volunteers, our partners. 
The festival has been eight days long this year. This is the crescendo of the entire week as today's day, but um, every year it gets bigger and we're just really grateful for the community support and all of the support of everybody who makes this possible because it really is a very grassroots, organic type of event and without the community support, it would not happen. For TV20, this is Alex Picturna. Thank you, Alex. In a heartwarming display of community spirit, the Cleveland Cavaliers have stepped up to the hoop, quite literally, by refurbishing the basketball court at the Fairfax Recreation Center. The best team and organization in the NBA has made an investment in your future. In Fairfax, we want it to be a destination for healthy living and healthy eating and active living. So this is another step to make this a healthy community for all of you. I'd like to thank Ryan and all of the staff at Fairfax for making this a great experience for these young people every day. Let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> First, we thank our amazing partners, the Cleveland Cavaliers, for sticking with the city of Cleveland and making investments like refurbishing our basketball courts, number 15. Let's give that a clap. And the mayor also has a special message for all of you. Take full advantage of these opportunities. Our neighborhood resource and recreation centers are working really hard with partners like the Cleveland Cavaliers every single day to make sure you have a place where you can come that's safe, that's fun, and that's also interesting. The once worn out court has undergone a remarkable transformation thanks to the generous efforts of the Cleveland Cavaliers. This rec center, it should really be a beacon of hope. It should be a beacon of opportunity. It should be something that you can come to to participate, to engage, to compete, but ultimately also to develop yourselves because this is a place where dreams should be born and those dreams should be realized and in, in, in opportunity that our community provides for each and every one of you. And it's a huge part of what we do to create those opportunities, like I said, by investing in, in not just in brick and mortar, but in programs and opportunities for all of you to be able to, to, to ascend to whatever goals all of you want to achieve. And man, my first thought was like, man, wow, this thing looks good. I, you know, I like to play ball myself, so I'm anxious, you know, to get back in here and, you know, get my shots up, you know, get back in the gym myself. You know, it's, it looks real good, man, real good. I feel like they did a wonderful job. I'm hoping it will impact by keeping the kids out the streets, in the gym, you know, when they got something good. It, you know, it, it draws their attention and I feel like, you know, this will keep the kids from the Fairfax community in the gym and off of the streets. The refurbished court not only provides a safe and updated space for community members to enjoy, but also serves as a symbol of unity and collaboration. The Cavaliers have not just renovated a new court, they've given residents a renewed sense of pride and belonging. Cleveland Browns offensive lineman Joel Batonio has scored big off the field by making a generous donation to the Gunning Gators youth football team. Joel Batonio, known for his skills on the field, has shown his commitment to nurturing the next generation of football talent by donating a substantial amount of football training equipment to the Gunning Gators. Being in the city of Cleveland, they've supported me since the day I got here, and um, it's become our home. You know, me and my wife Courtney and our, our kids, you know, we, we love it here. Um, and just having the opportunity to give back when we do, is, uh, is such a blessing for us and we want to help these kids out and you know we know they had a great football season um, you know one of the, one of their groups won a championship they're just starting up though and so we wanted to try and help them with some some new equipment and uh, and get them going on the right foot because there's a lot of good people in this city that are helping the young kids out and uh, we just want to be a small part of that the donation is a game changer for gunning it includes new footballs training cones tackling dummies and even some state-of-the-art agility equipment it's going to make a huge difference in player development. Yeah, we wanted to thank Joe Batonio and the Cleveland Browns for their generous donation um, to our youth uh, football program. Uh, the 11 U um, went on to win the city championship uh, for the Cleveland Uni Football League. Uh, the 7 U, which was their first year, uh, was able to come out as the Directors Bowl champions. So uh, the donation is greatly appreciated and the kids will benefit a lot from it. Never, it never gets old, you know, um, seeing the reactions, like, uh, it's cool for me too, you know, I, I just feel like I'm a regular dude, but coming out here, it's, it's pretty special, and, you know, they're asking me if I know Nick Chubb, and so I, I hit him with a FaceTime, you know, I don't think he was ready for it, but he did answer, and the kids were real excited, so it was, uh, 
you know, Nick's a great guy, so he, um, he, he supported them too. But no, it's so fun to be out here and, and just interact with the kids because they all just love playing ball and, and love playing football and just, uh, just, you know, have bright futures ahead. Center manager Carlitos Torres touched on how inspiring this donation from Antonio is. Oh, it's a blessing, man, whenever you see uh, the give back to the kids and in the community, to see the kids have hope. Um, you know, Browns had a great season, so it gives the uh, kids a chance to now, uh, you know, feel I can make a difference, I can keep on trying to persevere, succeed um, through academics, which is the most important, and then now through being a, a student athlete. So it's always great to see um, the, the, their success through uh, sports. Joel Batonio's donation is not just about the equipment, it's about inspiring the next generation of football players. The Gunning Gators are ready to hit the field with renewed enthusiasm, thanks to the support of their new MVP off the field, Joel Batonio. The City of Cleveland is hiring for summer recreation jobs with a job fair on February 24th at Frederick Douglass Rec Center from noon until 3. The city has job openings for a variety of summer jobs. Please make sure to bring your ID along with your social security card or birth certificate and you can interview with a Cleveland HR rep. If you miss the job fair on February 24th, don't worry. The next one will be on March 2nd at the Thurgood Marshall Center from noon until 3. For more information, call Latasha at 216-664-2325 for details. The early screening of the Bob Marley biopic drew music enthusiasts to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame for a night filled with reggae and rhythms and the spirit of the legendary artist. TV20 reporter Errol Porter was there and has more with this story. Thanks, Dan. I'm here at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in downtown Cleveland, Ohio, where Cinema Cleveland and Paramount Theaters are presenting an advanced screening of the new Bob Marley biopic, One Love. The highly anticipated film gave fans a unique opportunity to experience the life and legacy of the iconic reggae legend. Well, I always appreciated his reggae music. Uh, it represents Jamaica. I love the country, even though it's a very dangerous place to visit. Uh, but they, they have great people. And I got excited when I saw the movie coming here. Well, I will say I'm a little disappointed there's no food here, no jerk chicken, you know, no oxtail, but we'll let that, we'll let the slide. Um, I'm here to see the Bob Marley biopic here, pre-screening here in Cleveland, Ohio. Now, growing up over, uh, when you were younger, do you remember Bob Marley's music resonating through your home or something like that? Well, I'm embarrassed to say that I, I, I jumped on the Bob Marley train very late in life um, when I started to play out in my own bands and, um, you know, enter the Cleveland musical scene um, and from there um, it just kind of flourished from there and you know had to kind of kind of backtrack and deep dive into it. I saw Bob actually at the um, Agora probably 1976 when he made the first run into Cleveland and uh, WMMS was playing a little bit of Marley at that time and uh, I happened to walk in on the show and they were playing No Woman No Cry it was just the whole room was just like in a hypnotic trance, you know, it was so cool. So it's a very exciting to be here tonight. The biopic directed by Ronaldo Green delves into the life of the legendary musician from his humble beginnings in Jamaica to his rise to international stardom. The film explores Marley's musical journey, his impact on reggae music, and the profound messages of love and unity in his lyrics. Oh man, I'm so excited. I, um, I saw this, I believe when I was, I went to see The Color Purple. Um, and I was like, oh my goodness, when's that coming out? So I had to make some phone calls, send some emails, like I, I, I need to know uh, when this movie's coming out. So of course, no other date than February 14th, Valentine's Day, uh, to premiere One Love. Um, but we're seeing it here early today, a couple days early, so um, I'm excited. I'm really excited. And there you have it. Bob Marley inspired generations through his message of love and unity, and we hope you will too. I'm Merrill Porter, this is TV20, and we are Cleveland. Back to you, Dan. <laughs> Thanks, Errol. The biopic hit is currently in theaters nationwide, and it promises audience an unforgettable journey into the life of the reggae legend. Finally, it was a day to celebrate and honor senior citizens at the Frederick Douglass Neighborhood Resource and Recreation Center as a part of their Black History Month celebrations. The seniors came to the rec center for a resource fair and to do some socializing, but most came for the line dancing. Very good, Cleveland, let's go. 
What we're here now for is we're celebrating Black History Month. We've been doing Black History Month for many decades, and we're trying to make sure that seniors are involved in Black History Month. So we engage with them with little refreshments. We have uh, some line dancing that will be going on a little later with Robert Johnson, the line dance king. They've been doing it for years. So we invited him out so he can help us with the seniors to teach them some line dance and get them a little exercise going on. Johnson says it's very important to let our seniors know how important they are to the city. As we move along, as we've been indulged with the city of Cleveland, Having the seniors involved is very important to us as a whole because without the seniors, we wouldn't be here. So we need to re make, recognize them and their importance to us in history with the city of Cleveland. So the seniors are very important. So we want them to know that they are important to us and we want to recognize them today. Donna Person, who attended the event, says the resource fair was the most meaningful to her. A lot of us seniors we have problems with our water bills and different bills. And there's people here to help you out. And I think it's wonderful that they're doing something for the seniors. Uh, everybody is friendly. And if you have any questions, they will help you out as much as possible. All right, you can watch TV20 wherever you go by hitting up our live stream on our website at tv20cleveland.com. We are constantly uploading new content on our TV20 Cleveland YouTube page, so make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on anything. You can also connect with TV20 Cleveland on your favorite social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and X. Coming up next, learn about what's going on with the Cleveland Metropolitan Schools with this week's CMSD 360. Thanks for watching TV20 News. I'm Dan Monroe. Be sure to stay tuned for more on TV20. We are Cleveland. Hello, I'm Darielle Snipes with the CMSD News Bureau. Welcome to CMSD 360, a look at news happening around the district for the week of February 18th. There is no school and all facilities will be closed Monday in observance of President's Day. The School Choice website is now open for families with students in kindergarten through 12th grade to select a school for the 2024-2025 academic year. CMSD allows students to attend any school in the district regardless of where they live. For more information and to select a school, go to choosecmsd.org. The selection process will end on March 22nd at 5 p.m. CMSD is offering a game-changing platform designed to enhance engagement and communication within the CMSD community. The Let's Talk app provides students, parents, teachers, staff, and community stakeholders a convenient and accessible way to voice their questions, concerns, and feedback 24-7 from any telecommunication device. All you need to do to get started is to go to the CMSD website at clevelandmetroschools.org and click the Let's Talk button. Fill out a form and within 24 hours during the work week, you will receive a response. It is just that easy. Three wellness clinics are now open for CMSD students and families at Glenville High School, Mound, and Clara Westrop Pre-K through 8 schools. Last Thursday, CMSD CEO Dr. Warren Morgan, Metro Health President and CEO Dr. Erica Steed, and Dr. David Margolius, City of Cleveland Public Health Director and others held a ribbon cutting ceremony to celebrate the openings. The clinics will have Metro Health staff working alongside CMSD school nurses to provide vision screenings, basic dental services, athletic screenings, and wellness checkups for scholars. At Charles Muni Pre-K-8 through School, a Muffins for Moms event is scheduled on Thursday from 8 to 9 in the morning. Luis Munoz Morin students and families can participate in a marvelous math night on Thursday from 3 to 5 p.m. Families can enjoy a fun time while showing off their math skills. CMSD is hiring on February 29th. There will be a job fair at East Professional Center from 9 to 3 for those looking to become a substitute secretary, substitute paraprofessional, or substitute teacher. Applicants need to bring their state ID and resume. For more information, go to clevermetroschools.org slash hiring. The Cleveland School of the Arts is celebrating Black History Month with the Symphony of Culture, the sounds of our story performance. 
Students will honor the African American culture through music starting with Negro spirituals all the way up to hip hop. Two performances are scheduled on February 29th at 5.30 and then 7 p.m. and they're open to the public. Tickets cost $15. For more information, contact CSA. This week's CMSD shout out goes to the latest Heart Champion recipients. There were 51 Heart Champion nominations this quarter and 20 were named champions. They include teachers, paraprofessionals, bilingual instructors, family support specialists, and more. And for the first time, a school-based team at William Cullen Bryant Pre-K through 8 school was recognized. This award is given to those who communicate with heart by providing quality customer care for all stakeholders in the Cleveland Metropolitan School District. Congratulations! Now, if your school, staff, or students are doing something amazing, we want to hear about it. Please tag CMSD on social media and definitely use the hashtag CMSD shoutout. We'll stay connected with what's going on in the district by downloading the CMSD app or following CMSD on Instagram, X, formerly known as Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. Thanks for watching CMSD 360. Have a great and productive week.